This next change is fundamental. It will significantly improve how you can work with Photoshop CS2. Now, those of you who use After Effects are used to having the ability to continuously rasterize. That is, you place an image file or you place a vector piece of artwork and you could scale it up and down. And as long as you have original resolution, After Effects can go out, read that information back in and redraw crisply. Now in the past, Photoshop didn't have this. If you placed a logo on the screen and scaled it down and then changed your mind and scaled it back up, it didn't work, it got really pixelated. Watch. The key is to not open an object, but to choose File, Place. And we navigate out to the image that we want to use. Now I'm going to place an AI file, an Adobe Illustrator file, but this will work with almost any file format. Place. A simple dialog box comes up and I select the object and hit OK. Remember earlier we checked that preference that said automatically scale placed objects? Notice the object comes in scaled to fit inside of our image. Now, let's say I decided to shrink this down. I hold down Option Shift and I drag and it scales exponentially towards the center. And I place that object where I thought it was going to go. I'm just nudging it over with the keys. And I hit Return. Now, in typical fashion, the producer or the client comes into the room and say, I really like that, but could you make it a little bit bigger? And previously, your only choice was to go back out, grab the file, and do it again. But I want you to notice something here. If you look at the Layers palette, you're going to see something different. Notice we've got a little icon here indicating that this is a smart object. Smart objects link back to the original object on your desktop or in your file folder. Now, from a media management standpoint, this means that you should keep all of your assets organized for a particular Photoshop document. But let's go ahead and scale this up and watch what happens. I'll press Command T for free transform. On a PC, that's Control T. And I start to drag this up. And I'm going to make it really large here to show my point. And notice when I hit enter, it redraws that. We were able to blow that object up significantly. And because it went back and read in the vector data, Photoshop CS2 redrew it and it looked perfectly crisp on the screen. This is a great change. Works with vector files. Let's see it with a raster file. I'll choose File, Place, and I'll navigate to a raster image. I place that image in, and I size it, and hit Enter. Again, you'll see the little indication in the Layers palette that this is a smart object. So, if you change your mind, you can go back and free transform this object, and Photoshop will reread back in the information and allow you to blow the photo up all the way up to its original size that you scanned it at. Now, if you only scan this image at lower than video resolution, it will get soft if you blow it up but I generally scan at a 4,000 pixel by 4,000 pixel resolution. 4,000 total pixels each direction when I scan. Now watch. Command T for free transform. I can rotate that object, scale it up, and when I go ahead and click apply, Photoshop went back, reread the raster data back in, and redraws this as crisp as it can. This is outstanding. This significantly will allow you to have much more flexibility in your designs. Instead of opening and copying and pasting, or dragging and dropping sources in, choose File, Place, 
because the flexibility you gain is significant. As video editors and motion graphic artists, you depend upon non-linear, non-destructive technology. Now, Photoshop CS2 gives you that ability. You can take vector and raster data, place it into your image, and even after closing the document, you can go back and resize that layer. And when you do, Photoshop will redraw the layer at the maximum crispness that it can perform. Again, this is outstanding.